Today, 70 years after the J. Edward Moran Municipal Generating Station was commissioned by then, then Mayor Moran a, as a coal-fired power plant, and 30 years after that power plant was decommissioned, I am thrilled to be here to announce the completion of phase one of the new Moran frame. The Moran frame, this revived steel superstructure, represents the rebirth of the post-industrial northern waterfront that we've been working on since 2014, and the reclamation of this site on the shores of Lake Champlain as a treasure for Burlingtonians and visitors alike to know and enjoy. The Moran frame will stand as a proud symbol of the innovative spirit of this community for generations to come and will serve as a centerpiece for all of the outdoor recreation, community programming, local commerce, food and art happening in this part of the waterfront, which we are calling Waterworks Park. The frame, with its preservation of the outline of the former electric plant, will represent the remarkable energy transformation that is underway in this city as, it, in as we attempt to electrify everything with renewable power. We are also announcing today the creation of a new nonprofit called Friends of Frame that is part, <laughs> that's right. Friends of Frame is partnering with the city right now to pilot a series of activation efforts uh, to, and we're going to get a taste of that today, and it's going to continue at, during highlight, at New Year's, and de then into the spring and summer. Um, we'll hear uh, more about this effort from Zach Campbell, who is, this is really his, his concept, his idea. It's a really exciting idea that is grounded in successes that other communities have seen, where, such as Friends of the High Line in New York City uh, and many other parks facilities around the country where an independent nonprofit can inject all sorts of energy and resources into the programming and evolution of public spaces. So we'll hear more about that from, from Zach uh, in a moment. For, and we're going to hear from a couple other speakers as well. Doreen Kraft, our director of the uh, <clears throat> Burlington City Arts and someone who has really uh, been with this city and seen this building evolve and all the uh, seen all the plans and efforts for this part of the waterfront uh, over the years and we'll hear from Jesse Beck, uh, principal at Freeman French Freeman which has been our architect partner through the years of, of getting to today. I want to thank and recognize a number of other people before we hear from the other speakers uh, and I'm not going to capture everyone. This is a little bit of a uh, reunion, I feel like, looking around to see uh, so many people who have worked on this project uh, over the years and in current months. Um, so let me just call out a few people. It's great to see an old friend and both general manager of the Burlington, the former general manager of the Burlington Electric Department and former director of CEDO, Neil Lunderville here. <coughs> Neil um, was really crucial in the early months uh, as we shifted away from other visions of this building to the, the frame concept. Neil had a huge, uh, huge role in, in, in that conception. Um, I saw, see also from that period, uh, Kirsten Merriman Shapiro is here with us. Kirsten has worked for CETO for, I believe, over 20 years and was or approximately 20. <laughs> and uh, you can see her stamp on so much that's that's around us. I want to recognize current CETO director, Brian Pine, who also has worked on this project through through the years in a variety of capacities and, and played a key role in getting us to today. And Samantha Dunn, um, who is our assistant director for, for community works and really since she joined us about a year ago has really taken on um, uh, this this project and, and moved it forward she took over from grace sifo who, who was our first assistant director for community works who's also here with us today um, so thankful for the work that all of you uh, put into this um, i want to uh, I think we have some other members of the design and development team here as, as well today. If you could raise your hand, make sure 
Uh, I see Kurt, Kurt uh, hey, Muller from, uh, who's been our environmental consultant. Uh, or some of a, a big, we couldn't have gotten here without addressing the uh, environmental issues on the site. DEW has been our construction uh, partner through this and really unique and unusual project and has been a great partner, even as we were struggling through the early months of the, uh, the pandemic and trying to figure out how do you do a construction project uh, while you're also battling a global pandemic. Very thankful for, for, for your help. And uh, is Alex here today? Uh, if you're, your partner? He's, he's out of town. He's out of town. All right. Well, I do want to recognize he, Alex uh, Halperin, who uh, uh, has been a... a, a really committed to this project for years. Sorry he can't be with us today, but thank you. I'm glad that, that you're able to, Jesse, representing the firm. Um, so with that, I think, um, you know, I will, I will just call out to it's great to have the current general manager of uh, the Brunswick Electric Department, Darren Springer, here as well. You know, it, there's such, there will always be this connection between BD and this site in that, um, Again, this uh, served as this really unique facility that was both a coal burning plant and then helped us pioneer our biomass uh, effort before we built a, a new facility over in the Intervale for it. And, uh, and it is a really important part of Burlington's history, important part of our current moment that we are moving towards becoming a net zero city. And it will always be an exciting part uh, of this project, uh, that link to the electric past. So with that, I think first person we're here from is Doreen Kraft. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Mero. Um, before my formal comments, I just, you know, you're making me reminisce, right? <laughs> like, um, you know, it was in the 70s that we had an international symposium of sculptors that came from all over the world and used this facility as a backdrop for the creation of new work. And there's been, as you remember, a lot of opposition. There were people who were screaming, tear this down, tear this down. And um, it was a really rough period of time as to whether or not this extraordinary landmark and monument would be saved. And so I feel so proud today, you know, and I've been up on the <laughs> top floor when it was there with a bunch of architects looking out over the city and um, talking about all the things that could, this could become. So it's really, it's, it holds so much of our history here in Burlington. And yeah, so just happy to be at this um, point in the history. So today I think marks the transitioning of this space from the unsustainable energy of coal to the cleanest, most renewable energy that there is creativity from generating pollution to generating beauty and wonder the frame is a monument to thinking beyond the tra traditional parameters of public space it's our community canvas upon which generations of Burlingtonians can represent any idea imaginable today and for years to come from the lake the mountains the culture the music and yes the ice cream we are a small city with big icons, and this stunning work is now among them. BCA and our partners in the city are committed to the idea that public art contributes to a city's well-being in so many countless ways, from inspiring ideas and reflection and beautifying public spaces to supporting local artists financially and helping to draw businesses and the creative community that values culture and the arts. We look forward to working with Friends of Frame and with lots of local artists and promoters to bring this wonderful, unique, and lasting work of art to life. Thank you. Well, congratulations to everybody. Uh, the Moran journey has been a really long one with many hands shaping its future along the way. I'm Jesse Beck, and for FFF it started 32 years ago. We were hired by CETO, then led by a very young Michael Monty. I don't know where he is, he's not here. And a group called BEAM, led by Carol Stewart. Since then, there's been many valiant runs at repurposing this iconic structure, uh, both by ourselves and many, many others. 
Many minds and hearts have touched this building during this journey, and it truly has been a community effort to achieve what you see today. On behalf of FFF, our consultants and partners, I'd like to thank the mayor for his very active role in shaping this project. CETO and the Friends of Frame are going to be great for their enthusiasm and dedication to keeping this going. And the Parks Department and Parks Foundation who will continue to keep this an evolving and active public space. Finally, I hope you all enjoy the design features of this historic place, including the visible light features only at night. So come on back when it gets dark and you'll be amazed at what you see. Through creative design and architectural detailing, this community has preserved a unique landmark that makes our waterfront a memorial, memorable, mem <laughs> memorable experience. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for being here today to celebrate this uh, convergence of the Moran plant's history and its future as the frame. The Moran plant has always had a unique way about it, giving rise to an intangible yet undeniable impression on the human experience when one is in its presence. An experience at once familiar and uncharted. It's well known that over the years, those many individual experiences uh, rarely seem to manifest in feelings of indifference towards the Moran plant with strong contingents both for and against a new vision for the bygone behemoth. My name is Zach Campbell and I founded Friends of the Frame on the belief that in its next chapter, this amazing place, a former power plant, could be a source of empowerment for the community to which it belongs. The striking red steel superstructure becomes a literal framework for creative expression to unfold within, beneath, and around. Simultaneously, a gallery and a park, a stage and a shelter, a playground and a market. An ever-evolving public space where art, nature, and connection can inspire us to open our minds and hearts to new perspectives while perhaps learning something new about ourselves as well. As we stand here now at the threshold of this next era, I want to invite and welcome everyone to be a friend of the frame, to actively participate in shaping the future of this special place in whatever way holds meaning for you. The structure of Friends of the Frame is intended to be an ever-widening circle, an inclusive, engaged collective of contributors who believe in the potential of this extraordinary space to impact people's lives for the better. One person who embodies that spirit is Lauren Larkin, who is here today despite the chilly November weather to present a preview of her aerial healing arts hammock stations, which will be popping up at the frame throughout the spring, summer, and fall of next year. Please head over to experience the hammocks for yourself after the ribbon cutting. They are not to be missed. Friends of the Frame is also partnered with Burlington-based artist and designer Jasmine Parcia and local photographer Katie Palatucci to produce two original posters for today's event. These two designs each reference the past, present, and future of the Moran plant and the frame in their own distinctive ways while providing a compelling glimpse into the breadth and depth of talent within our local creative community. We're pleased to offer prints of both posters to everyone in attendance today to take home and enjoy as a thank you for your continued support of the frame. You may notice as you explore the space today, and I hope you all do after uh, the ceremony's concluded, uh, there are a couple hanging bench swings on the lake side of the frame. These swings were designed and fabricated in collaboration with the awesome team at Generator, and they turned out beautifully. Friends of the Frame is currently in the midst of its first crowdfunding campaign on patronicity to bring additional activations, art, and public amenities to the frame. If we reach our crowdfunding goal of $20,000 by December 15th, we'll receive an additional $40,000 matching grant from Vermont's Better Places program. If we're successful, we'll be able to bring additional swings to the frame, including two ADA compliant wheelchair accessible swings that will be designed and fabricated by the faculty and students at Generator. Over the next several months, you'll be seeing and hearing about many more exciting installations, events, and partnerships that are currently in the works. But more importantly, we wanna hear from you. What do you wanna see or do with the frame? What can we do to make the frame more accessible, inclusive, or inviting? Do you have an idea for a project or performance? 
Do you have a suggestion for further democratizing the decision-making process around public programming? The Friends of the Frame model thrives on participation, and we are actively working on some really cool ways to make participating super easy and fun. Right now, the best way to get involved or informed is to visit the Frame's website, theframebtv.org, and follow the Frame on social media at theframe.btv. My ultimate hope for the Frame is that it never loses that intangible sense of possibility and promise that eventually led us to this very moment, and that for decades captured the hearts and imaginations of countless dreamers, inspiring bold ideas, and bringing people together in substantive, meaningful ways. That is the true energy future of this power plant. And when that energy can be harnessed into action, there's almost no limit to its potential. Thank you all, and welcome to the frame. Well, that was great, Zach. Thank you for, for sharing that. Very exciting. The uh, initiative is now underway. Um, as we do move out of this construction phase into having a facility that's fully open to the public, this is becoming a parks facility. I want to recognize the Parks, Recreation, and Waterfront team that is uh, here uh, as well and for all that they have done to contribute to getting today, and they will do going forward. Um, and um, because it is going to be a, a parks facility, uh, we are expecting to partner with the Parks Foundation on future uh, investments and, and phases of, of the frame's future. And I see uh, past uh, Parks Foundation member John Bosange with us and current member Paul Odie, thank you, and the rest of the foundation for being here as well. And Brooke, Brooke, Brooke uh, Gilman is here as well. I didn't see you back there, Brooke, in the hat and glasses. Um... <laughs>